Hey, okay, welcome back. And um, we've done our frame, which looks pretty cool. I made just a few little tweaks, just added a bit more moss here and there. And I'm quite happy with that now. Yeah, so now we're going to move on to doing our glass. Very, very, I've already done it, as you can see my layers right there. It's very, very simple. But there's one thing you have to do first. It's just turn off the window frame. Make sure your glass is selected down here, not the window frame. And you'll notice, if you select the window frame, you'll notice that you've got an ambient occlusion and an opacity slot there in your texture sets. If you click on your glass, like so, you'll notice that these two are missing. I didn't have these in my glass. So if you, if you haven't got those, you need to bake them in. So you need to go up here and you need to add them. Click on here and add your ambient occlusion and you'll see opacity down there as well. Uh, make sure, like I say, your hut glass is selected. And then you need to bake. Click on bake textures and it will do its magic again and it will bake down your ambient occlusion and your opacity and add them to your texture set here. Okay, so now if you come over to here, um, delete the first layer that you always have at the start, just delete it and then add a fill layer like this. So you have one fill layer here and you'll notice if you come down in your materials, you now have an OP slot here and that's for opacity. On your first layer, you should only have one fill layer at the moment. Ignore these for now. Um, so one fill layer. Just turn it on. Obviously yours will already be on. And just bring your... Just turn off all of these. So you turn off colour, height. Leave rough because you want it to be... Uh, shiny. Reflective. Um... Turn, leave metal off, turn normal off, turn ambient occlusion off and just have your opacity and your rough on. And you can see I've got a kind of a reflective thing going on there. So you can see uh, if I bring up my exposure on my environment a bit more, you can see it a little bit better. Hopefully you can see it in there. So next just come down here to your roughness and to take it all the way down to black so it's completely shiny so there's no roughness on it for now and that will give it this reflective look depending on what environment uh, you've got selected I've already, I just used the panorama one um, and then in your opacity bring it all the way down to about 0 0.2 don't take it all the way down because it will just vanish and um, Bring it down to about 0 0.2. Oh, that's the wrong one. There. Like so. I found an image on textures.com. And I'm going to go for this kind of look on my glass. So it's really grimy, really dirty. It's got bird droppings on it and all sorts of marks. And it looks well lived in. In fact, this is from a, an old house as well. So it kind of fits. Um, you know, it's kind of got the same type of window frame, sort of, that we've we've done. So this kind of works. So this is a good reference point. I'll come back to this a uh, couple of times as we go along. So, so have a good look at that now. So it's very dirty, very old, nearly falling out of its frame, although we're not going to do that. But, you know, I'm just more interested in the glass. You can see, you know, that see-through, that clearly is not... So we want that sort of hazy look about it with all the grime and the dirt on top as well. So, so we've got a glass. If you turn your window frame back on like this, you can see if you you know you can see through it already here. And it's I think that's probably too much. So you might want to just sort of take it up a little bit. You know, if you make it solid, you can't see through it completely through it so you want it somewhere in between maybe 0 0.3 maybe that's cool that's good enough perhaps so around about 0 0.3 on your opacity scale there and that's that's it for the start okay now add another fill layer like i've done here and you want to make it pink i can see i've added my dirt already but you want to add 
a fill layer and I'm going to make the base color a sort of dirty murky brown sort of color like we've got here yeah I kind of did it up around here somewhere like that you know if you compare it to the photograph it's kind of about about right um, so all I did here was yours will probably look like this still clean so add the fill layer like that then add a black mask so just right click add a black mask like that make sure you've got brush selected up here and choose your brush your favorite brush I always quite often use either mold for this is a good one um, or you can use the dirt where's the dirt this dirt here I always use this one quite a lot it's quite a good yeah it's quite good uh, make sure your grayscale is not full on so if it's black you won't see anything in fact it rubs it out and if it's gray you know it's about right just choose your level that you want to paint and just go around and start painting around the edges like I've done here all the way around all the way around your uh, panes so they're all looking a bit grubby and a bit dirty particularly in the corners and on the edges like this like that which is cool um, yeah and in here we'll click back on the uh, fill layer itself here yeah you can leave color on height on rough on and opacity on if you come down here you've already selected your base color you know you can put some bump into this if you want to into your into your uh, height map so you can make it really gunky as if somebody's thrown mud at it <laughs> but I'll bring it down so it's just got a subtle bumpiness because it's quite nice to sort of catch the light on it can you see can you see what it's doing there very subtly sort of catches the light there just bring it down a little bit there you go <clears throat> and roughness um, just make make it white because what you don't want is shiny mud because then it kind of loses a bit you know it loses its value and, and it goes a bit weird you can see it's gone a bit weird there and it's a really good contrast to have shiny and not so shiny let me just turn the environment rotation around a bit more so we can see what's going on here yeah there you go that's better I think the height could come down a bit more Yeah, there you go, that's better. You can see there's a little bit of roughness in the glass. I really like that. Okay, so, and obviously your, your opacity wherever you want it here. And you can adjust that as well. So everything now, every layer that you put on has got opacity option, um, which is cool because that means some you know some things stuck on the glass might be fully opaque whereas the glass itself is not and anything in between can be anything in between basically um, okay so the next thing I did was to add if I get my image back again was to add sort of things like this these white blobs can you see these white marks and these streaks and splats and sprays all over it I added those next with the next layer so if I turn that on it, all that is is just a normal layer nothing more to it than that um, and I just splatted some objects around it. and again turn on color because you want the color of the splats that you're putting on there um, leave on height rough and you don't need normal you can turn off normal 
um, and opacity. You notice with this, because it's just a normal paint layer, um, when you paint, it adopts your values to the paint that you're painting. So I could do that and you'll see it just turns into, you're just painting into the, because my opacity is really low, you're just painting into the height map really, um, which is quite nice because you, if you want a really subtle texture, um, a, a subtle bump on your, your glass, then that's a good technique, you can use that. But if you turn up your opacity and then paint, you can see the splats a lot more. If you turn it fully up and paint, you know, it becomes more evident. So these values on just a normal paint layer, on just a normal layer, um, get painted into the layer when you paint. You can't adjust them like now. That won't change if I adjust the opacity now because um, I've painted it into it. That's the difference between uh, a layer and uh, sort of I'm doing it in a mask, basically. But that's fine, you know, it's fine, it works. It's cool. And you can see I've added lots of spots and splats and and streaks using various brushes. Um, so you can do that. And then I added the trusted, I wanted to continue the moss. And then I just drew onto the glass. Just around the edges, around the bottom of the edges, just to make give that give it a sort of continuation of the moss on the wood. If you kind of stand back, it all kind of works together really nicely. I think I would probably make this a little bit darker, perhaps. So you've got to be careful, maybe a bit lighter, because it kind of loses it otherwise. Yeah, you don't want to get it lost in there. There you go, that's, that's cool. So if we get our window back, you know, it kind of works. Although on my glass, I only had it around the edges. You know, this guy's still living in here, so you might just rub the <laughs> rub the middle of the glass just so you can see out of it from time to time. Um, and that's it. That's the glass done. I'm not going to do anything more to it until I see it in. Um, um, in, in unity basically but you know you can see it works quite well against light nice and nice glass it's it's reflective it's kind of got a weird distortion thing going on there and you know you can see the dirt you can see the splats it's got the moss around the edges it looks like it's old dirty old glass and that's exactly what we want to achieve. So that's it. Job done. Once you're happy with them, um, just go ahead and export them in the usual way. File, export textures, and make sure you have hut glass and window frame selected on both sides. You can see the window frames at 2048, which is fine. Um, the glass doesn't need to be at 2048. Um, it really doesn't. In fact, let's just try to compensate for the extra frame size. Let's take down this to 512 and see what happens. See, it turns it a bit smudgy, a bit smeary. But you know what? It doesn't... No, that's probably a bit too low. Okay, let's put that back up to 1024. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we'll leave the glass at 1024. We'll leave the frame. I mean, even though it's there's not doesn't seem to be a lot there, but there's a lot of surface. You know, if you think about every single side, and we've got the inside too, uh, even though we're not doing anything with that. And you can see the difference between the inside and the outside. It's quite significant. But you know, the inside still takes up UV space. So we're going to leave that at 2048. Leave the glass at 1024 and export textures go and choose your folder in choose your folder in TAG raw project files meshes 
Um, we're going to put it go into textures here. And we've got one for hut like this. Um, so we've got walls and roof, and we've got chimney here. So let's create a new folder and call it window. Just one, just just window will be fine. And we're going to select that folder. Uh, we're going to do TGA because we need the alpha to come through. Um, and it should do, hopefully. We're going to go into configuration. Uh, it should do in the albedo. It should appear in the albedo because we've got the alpha selection there. So it should come through in the glass. The alpha should be inside the albedo transparency there. So we've got height, ambient inclusion, normal, smoothness, metallic, metallic smoothness, and albedo transparency. And you can see the opacity is already selected there uh, for that color into there. So that's where the opacity that we've got in our maps will appear in our albedo transparency. And we'll have a look in the glass. We'll bring it to Photoshop and just have a look at the uh, alpha channel once we've exported it just to double check okay so that's it we can now export it uh, yep export open folder and here they all are so if we load up Photoshop uh, so here's Photoshop. If we go in and we load our glass albedo transparency, let's have a look. So there's our glass. If we go to the channels, and there's our transparency. So it has done it. It has put it in there. Let's turn our RGB back on. Turn the alpha off. Okay, so just shut that down. It's there. So we can always come and adjust it if it's not quite right. So that's it. The next thing is to get it into Unity and check it out, see what it looks like. So I'll see you in the next lecture.